they buried me in the water and I came out new. Ha <laughs> Now I'm baptized in blue. Welcome to the Officer Autumn Podcast, the only podcast designed specifically for female cops in mind. I hope you enjoy this podcast episode. If you love the music, go check out One Time Music. He's a fellow Leo. You can check him out in the show notes. And his full song, Baptized in Blue, is at the end of this episode. What's up, everybody? I'm so excited to bring you today's episode because I have a young lady on here with me who's been one of my girls for four years now. She's been hanging out with me. Um, she's been in a couple of my programs. She's in my Leo only group that I have on Instagram and, uh, she's really thriving in her career. But the reason why we have her on here, I mean, some multitude of reasons, but, um, one of the reasons why I have her on here is because I want her to talk to you about what it's like to work at an agency and be at a spot in your life as a female cop where you're not happy and you're not supported and you will, you find yourself in a low and then you take matters into your own hands and then you make new choices. So many times as law enforcement officers, we think that we are just fucking stuck and we are not. And especially as a woman uh, in law enforcement, we kind of think of, well, wherever I go, it's going to be the same. I'm always going to be treated like shit. I'm always going to be, you know, the man out, the woman out. And, um, and I want her to just tell her story. Um, and so that you can, you know, stop hearing it from me all the time and you can hear it from other people. So, um, I'm going to introduce you my girl. Her name is Tanya. Tanya, I'm really excited to have you here. Can you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Hello, thank you for having me, Autumn. So my name is Tanya. I worked for about five years at a mid-sized agency. Um, and after those five years, I transferred to a large scale agency, which has about 800 employees, I think right now. Um, so where I was at, uh, I, I enjoyed it at first. It was a good agency to work for. I learned a lot. Um, but there, a lot of lessons that I learned had to do with a lot of the negativity I experienced there. And as a woman, it is hard to be accepted in law enforcement. I feel you really have to pave your own way and work through the, the nuances and the, the unspoken rules that are set in place that you're never told as a woman and you have to figure them out as you go. And I think that's what's most difficult about being a female cop is the like I said, unspoken code that you don't know where it exists and you just have to figure out as, as you go on. Um, so where I was at was, it was a busy agency. We had a high call volume, <clears throat> but over my time there, I you know went through a couple experiences that I felt I was being treated unfairly because I was a woman and I didn't really have an outlet to get those feelings and thoughts to somebody else that would understand. So as different experiences kept happening, I started to feel really alone. And I think after my third, maybe three and a half years, I found Autumn's group. So your group, mm -hmm. um, and started to work with you a little bit about mindset. And at the time I had, you know, been trying to do some at home like practices for like intention setting and affirmations, but I, I didn't feel supported and I didn't feel like I said, anybody really understood what I was going through. So when I found your group and started to, to do some of the journaling work and just the conversations that we would have was really helpful for me um, because it made me feel like I, one, wasn't alone, but mm. two, it reaffirmed that some of the things that were going on weren't okay. And that unwritten code was probably taken a little bit too far. And what was most poignant for me was, you know, of course, as a female cop, you understand, but there were, you know, a number of men in the group as well, who looked at some of my experiences and agreed that, can I swear? Yes, of like, course hey, you can. Is, it's like, me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hey, yeah, that is fucked up. That is wrong. So, you know, and I had had, you know, a couple, a couple different opportunities to maybe further my career there. And 
I, at that point, wasn't sure if it was something that I wanted to continue. I was in such a negative mind space and was really feeling like I might need to look at going to a different agency. So through your group and again, doing that work with the journaling and stuff, I still have all those journals and it's actually funny. I, I was reading them a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, just like deciding what I wanted to do and the advice that I got from you and the group really helped me, I think, ultimately make the decision for myself that I wanted to choose my own happiness and get a fresh start where I could use the negative experiences that I went through and try to put a positive spin on them. So mm-hmm. shortly thereafter, I joined your group, I believe it was like a year and a half later, you know, we went through the whole COVID pandemic and whatnot. I ended up leaving the agency and going to a, a different one, a bigger one, um, and had to go through the academy again. I was back to recruit life, which as we had talked about before, was kind of a hard pill to swallow. You, you know, check your ego at the door and you, you start anew. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to use the negative experiences I had and take them as lessons and start with a positive mindset. And Mm -hmm. it was a lot of work. There was a lot of things that I had to do to get myself to that position. And I'm elated that I made the decision because I, you know, I've had people in my life tell me I look happier and that I seem happier. And I feel like I'm I'm living for myself and I'm not so caught up into the job and into the, the negative aspects of, oh, something bad happened at work or somebody said something nasty to me or somebody treated me in a way that I didn't like. I would, I, at my first agency, I would internalize that and it became, it became a part of who I was. And I started to see myself in the way that these people were treating me. And, and now I look at it like, you know, it's, it, it was probably not even that person's intention to treat me negatively. It's just them dealing with their own bullshit and they take it out on everybody else. And Mm -hmm. it, it's been such a, a great learning lesson for me. And I feel like a new person now because of it. That's huge. And like, so what do you think, what do you think like your biggest, like, let's go back and like, what do you think the biggest takeaway was? Cause I mean, like, let's be honest, I fucking say a lot of shit <laughs> and, but like, what do you think if your biggest takeaway was that empowered you to be able to not stay in a situation that really was fucking sucking the life out of you? Because I just want to highlight this while you're thinking is because we have a lot of women that are just getting beat up. I mean, they're just literally emotionally getting fucking beat up at on these jobs. And they just think like, Oh, I've been here for five years. Like this is it, or this is how every PD is going to treat me. Or I'm, this is all I'm good enough to do. There's not, there's no other options. Like what was the deciding factor for you? Like what, what stuck with you? That's a great question. I think my biggest takeaway was, and this is, something I think about a lot is when you remember your why, like, why did you become a cop? Why did you get into this job? If you be- became a cop because you wanted to wear a uniform and look cool, then you're not going to be able to endure the negativity and make changes for yourself. So it was remembering why I, I took the oath and why I went to the academy in the, in the first place. And I had to sit down and weigh out, okay, if I go somewhere else, is it going to be worth the sacrifices I'm going to make? And when I sat back down and remembered why I I got into this line of work in the first place, it was important for me to give it another try to see if the grass was greener somewhere else. I think that answers the question. Oh, it's so good. I think. Um, But I I owed it to me to say, okay, you love, because I love law enforcement. I love it as difficult as it can be. And this unwritten code is women and this and that it is the best job I have ever had. I, I don't want to do anything else, even on days where the calls suck and you're getting held and it's snowing and you're on midnights and you're a, a recruit again. It is still for me the best because I remembered why I did it. So Mm -hmm. I knew that I had put myself into such a mental rut that where I was, I wasn't going to be able to, 
to get out of it. Right. And there were, there were other factors that we had had a lot of promotions early on. So there probably wasn't going to be a lot of room for development. Um, I, where I was looking at going, the pay was better. So there were external factors, but the, the, the deep down one was I had already made that, that negative mind space for myself. So I owed it to me to go somewhere else and try again, because the job was worth it enough for me because I remembered why I started it in the first place. So I think the, the real catalyst was you love it, but you don't love it here. Can you love it somewhere else? And I had told myself if I went to another place and I felt the same way, well, at least I tried and maybe the time that I put in was just the, the time that I was going to do. And then I would, I would seek something else, but it, it ended up to be, I, I left and did that mental work and it, it ended up to be better. And sure is anywhere perfect. No. Um, but having been somewhere that I felt my mental state wasn't the most positive. Now I, I can, kind of look at myself and if I'm going down that road again, or if I'm in a situation where I'm communicating with somebody that's making me feel the same way, there are now tools that I have to deal with that. I don't, I don't feel the same way that I did these past five years. Mm. Powerful, huh? It is. It yeah, is. It, so much can change when we just change our minds. Like you just said, I did all this mental work, you know, my, I call it mindset work. It's, it's the same the same stuff and, and being clear on your why that's, that's huge. So what, like, what do you do now? Like, what do you practice now to keep yourself, you know, happy on the job, you know, as a woman, like we, you're obviously that you're, let's both like, can tell me the truth. I don't want to put answers in your mouth, but like, there's still hurdles as a woman in law sure. enforcement, correct? Yes. You know, even though you're working for a great agency, but we still have hurdles because the truth is, is there's only 12% of women that make up law enforcement. So like, we are still, we are nowhere near where we need to be, but that's my mission. So what, like, tell me about like, what are you doing to help yourself? Like now, even though you're at a great agency, like, what do you do now? Yeah, that because that mental work, just because you lay the foundation of it, it needs to continue. It's like mm -hmm. having a gym routine. It's, you know, you're not going to go through the academy and get out of the academy and stop working out. You're not going to stop, you know, doing defensive tactics. You're not going to stop practicing at the range. And I think a lot of people don't realize that mental health is a, it, it's a practice. It. So I, I do a lot of yoga. Um, I've been into yoga for a number of years now, but having that community uh, that's aside from the law enforcement community and being around a group of individuals that's different than our typical working community, you know, the, because we're around the type A is the, you know, this has to be a certain way. And that's how we function at work. But having this kind of spiritual side to myself, meditating, I like to read, I do a lot of hiking. So those types of activities help me remember that your life isn't just about being a cop. There are okay. other things and there are other facets to you as a person. And yeah. those things that make you who you are are what you bring to the job and how you communicate with people who are having a hard time. And it, it it's, it, they all intertwine together, right? So the things that I do outside of work make me more calm at work and make me do my job better and make me bridge connections with people in an easier, more authentic fashion. But yeah, some of the things that I do are, are the yoga, the meditation, the hiking. Um, I'll work overtime, but I won't work too much overtime because I know that if I work too much, then I won't have time to do the things that make me feel like myself. Mm. So it's, it's striking this balance where sure the money is awesome and you want to buy new stuff, but knowing that the way you are sleeping and eating and taking care of yourself, it all starts there because as they say, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So good. Yeah. So those so are good. some of the things I love to do. And, and the thing I want to highlight ladies is the fact that Tanya is completely stuck to being going in and finding who she is and then like sticking to that. And I just want to say that I, I, we all know, I preach this all the time. It's that self-awareness of, 
you know, am I dipping too far into completely taking on the cop identity or am I a police officer when I need to be? And like what I'm saying by that, I just, and, and, you know, Tanya, feel free to add, but like, I'm not saying like when you're off duty, I'm not saying you're not going to highlight when there's a shit bag or when there's a bad situation, or I'm not saying like your spidey senses aren't going off. I'm not saying don't carry, like, that's not what I'm saying, but like you listen to her and she's like, yeah, I do yoga. I go hiking. I read books. Like I try to hang out with people who aren't just cops, you know, like I'm really trying to maintain being who I am underneath the uniform, like under the badge and what a lifesaver that is. I think, I think that's so big. What do you want what would what advice would you have as we wrap up tanya what advice do you have for the younger officer or for the for the woman who's struggling like who who was you who was you at that at that department like what did you need to hear what did you need to hear i needed to hear from women and men in this job that it was okay to feel how i felt and that some of what I was seeing was wrong. And I think that a piece of advice that I would give to women in this career is to not, for the love of God, do not fucking cut other women down. Because oh. I can't fucking stand anything more than a woman in this job who looks at other women and tries to put them down or talk shit about them. We're all in this together. We're all brothers and sisters in blue. We truly are. But the sisterhood needs a lot of work because you know you get like territorial territorial almost as a woman like oh this is my agency my this my that no there's room to share the love embrace that sister that's coming on embrace her let her know that she's wanted there take her under your wing as you know that that mentorship role because if you start to cut her down then she's going to look at herself and say what's wrong with me because maybe the reason why you're cutting her down is because you have some insufficiencies with you that other people made you feel and it's just the, this cycle that we mm -hmm. have to get out of i you know i worked with somebody at my past agency who who when i got there she she did make me feel like I was I was her sister in blue. And I remember she actually said that to me and we're still friends to this day. We don't work together, but that was very impactful for me. Mm. Um, and, you know, she was she was a person that I, I vented to a little bit and, you know, kind of understood in her own way what was going on. So I think that my my advice to women in this job is to, to if, you know, there's other women in your agency to to value them and to strike a bond with them. You don't have to be best friends, but you have to respect them. And when you respect others, you respect yourself. Mm. Powerful. Right. right. I Appreciate think that's that. important. Yeah. I think so too. Well, thank you, Tanya. Thank you for being here. Thank you for imparting your knowledge. As always, you know that I love you. I'm so proud of you. And it's nice to be able to highlight, you know, a sister in blue winning. And it's also nice to highlight like the fact that I've helped you just a little bit so that all these motherfuckers don't think I'm crazy <laughs> when I'm out you, here. Standing you got good shit. <laughs> it's good shit. And, and, you know, you reached out to me, you know, we, we stayed in touch, of course, you know, going through another Academy is, you know, kind of a, you're a little removed from the world, but you know, you've been with me all the steps of the way, just checking in. And, you know, I was, I was so proud when I left you, you know, the Academy and I was done and I, you know, came back out on the road and, you know, I sent you a picture and you, you, you were did. so, it was just such a proud moment. It was me, a proud moment. I was thinking about that when we first started talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember that second graduation photo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for everything. And just, you know, happy to be in your group and just living it. And yeah, I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy and, and just thank you. And I want every woman listening to this to, to know that like, you are her too. So you and Tanya really aren't that different. And, um, and that, like she said, like, you're not alone. And she obviously, we're not going to go into a lot of depth on everything that like she went through and stuff, just because for agencies and, and, and safety purposes and all those things, we're just not going to get into that, but just know that she's been there. I've been there. There's a lot of women who have been there and you are not stuck. You are not stuck. All right, Sheepdog Nation, I will see you next time.
they bury me in the water and I came, I knew. <laughs> now I'm baptized in blue. Family, country, and town. The media don't cover us. Huh. Well, maybe Fox, cause MSNBC and CNN surely don't care about cops. Politician more concerned about protecting the legal that are laying the law down and protecting the people. Let me get off my soapbox before I curse. I don't see way too many cops riding in hearse. Well, I wouldn't expect you to understand what I do. Only the thin blue light, cause they baptized in blue. Uh. I'm a fighter. I'm a winner. I'm gonna complete it if that means being deleted. I live with the credence. I do this for the combat vets and LEOs when I'm suited, ready to go. It's either friend or foe. Only Lord knows what my future's in store. I only kill with the hope to see more. So God don't close that door. If I take a life, it's him or me. With the host to survive, not big a tree. I go in situations that you cannot imagine. Deal with things that you cannot fathom. No, it's but so rather. I'd rather fight for cause than live for nothing. So when you read my ass, don't you know I die for something? You hypersensitive, she can play by justified force. You blame the cops first, that don't work, you blame the courts. But I wouldn't expect you to understand what I do. Only the thin blue line, cause they baptized in blue. Oh, I'm a fighter. Oh! 